Uh, look, I think I was in pretty good form today. I didn't get a lot wrong in the, the multiple choice rounds and no. got on a roll. Bad luck. Always a joy to have your company. Look forward to seeing you next time on the Chase Australia. Tonight, AFL players reject the push for 17 games as the league faces crunch time on round one. New details live. A massive job shock set to hit half a million on the line as coronavirus spreads. Exclusive details. Pensioners caught in an early morning shopping debacle as we head for tough new measures to protect the elderly. Qantas takes drastic action. Flights slashed, planes grounded. Staff urged to take leave. New hope in the desperate search for a vaccine. A human trial starts in the US. Melbourne scientists leading the world. And some good news. How strangers are making a difference with random acts of kindness. Live from our Melbourne headquarters, this is 7 News with Peter Mitchell. Good evening. AFL players have rejected the league's plan for a 17-game season, pushing to play extra matches despite the coronavirus crisis. The Players Association took its stand just a short time ago as the AFL's decision on the start of round one goes down to the wire. These details are emerging as we go to air. Tom Brown and Mark Stevens have the details. First, Mark Stevens. Steve-O, the players are pushing for more games. They are, Mitch. They want the traditional 22 games and they say that they will continue to push for that. They say there's a 40-week window to get it done. They're prepared to be flexible, play later into the season, cram in matches, change their holiday time, play much later into the year. As I said, the players were blindsided somewhat by the AFL's uh, call yesterday for a 17-game switch. They want to rethink. Here's the head of the AFLPA, Paul Marsh. All we're saying is we've got a 40-week window here. We don't know, no one knows where this is going to end up. Um, from our perspective, we should, we believe we should be keeping the option open for a 22-week season. If this thing is over at a point where we can deliver that, why would we not want to deliver that? So the league and the players at loggerheads over the length of the season. At the moment, if they play under a 17-game model, the players will have to take a 20% pay cut. The AFLPA at the moment saying they're not even discussing that. So plenty to play out, Mitch. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mark. Mark Stevens at Albert Park. Let's go to Tom Brown. Tom, it's just over 49 hours away, but the big question is, will round one go ahead? Mitch, they were meant to make a decision today, the AFL, but a source, a well-placed source, tells me tonight it's 50-50. The AFL will now make a decision early tomorrow afternoon. They're still seeking medical advice. The key issue is also this. Tonight, Federal Cabinet will consider lowering maximum crowds in public from 500 to 100. There's no guarantee the AFL will be exempt. There's a collective will to play round one Thursday night, but the question becomes why, if the community situation has got to this point, if the government tonight makes that decision. The uncertain state of club finances also means as part of a range of measures this afternoon they're looking at, some, some are seeking advice whether voluntary administrators, administration status would afford them better asset and director protection. Mitch. Thanks, Tom. Tom Brown reporting. The Australian workforce is bracing for a massive coronavirus hit with half a million jobs on the line. The grim warning comes in government advice obtained exclusively by Seven News. It predicts that the unemployment rate could double to 10 or 12 per cent with tourism, hospitality and airlines bearing the brunt of the pain. Delivering a brutal message. Businesses will close, people will lose their jobs. On 7 Sunrise, Finance Minister Matthias Cormann prepares Australians for mass layoffs in coming weeks and months. The situation has continued to evolve rapidly. 7 News has learned Cabinet Ministers have been warned the total number of unemployed Australians could skyrocket above one million, with several hundred thousand laid off temporarily or permanently within months. That's almost one in ten workers jobless, with the unemployment rate possibly doubling to 10% as businesses close, consumer spending collapses and several industries grind to a halt. Some sectors in our economy are going to be very severely uh, impacted. Ministers have been warned the sectors in the front line for job losses include tourism, hospitality, airlines, event planning, entertainment and especially Australia's more than two million casual employees and one and a half million sole traders. We're talking about a very large proportion of the workforce who are potentially affected. Increasingly we're seeing a shutdown of the economy. 
With more retailers likely to follow Nike and Apple's lead and temporarily close their doors, one solution, redirecting laid off workers into sectors where labour demand is increasing because of the virus, such as the health sector and supermarkets. I'd be happy to do anything because I've got a, a wife and kids, so um, any job is a job. But uh, there's a limit to that, we recognise that as well. Determined to limit the spread of the virus, I'm told Cabinet's considering limiting indoor gatherings to fewer than 100 people, affecting bars, restaurants, even weddings, and tough new visitor restrictions on aged care facilities to protect the most vulnerable. As government senators Susan MacDonald and Andrew Bragg become the latest MPs diagnosed, following Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton released from hospital today to recover at home with his dog Ralph. And former Prime Minister Julia Gillard self-isolating in London after meeting Sophie Trudeau, wife of Canadian PM Justin Trudeau. Miss Trudeau has also been diagnosed with the virus. Live now to political editor Mark Riley in Canberra. Mark, the new National Cabinet meets tonight. What's on the agenda? Well, Mitch, Scott Morrison will put those suggested indoor restrictions and aged care measures to state and territory leaders at that meeting tonight. The Prime Minister and his Cabinet maintain they're putting the health of the Australian people before the economy, but they remain well aware of the high economic stakes. 250,000 Australians lost their jobs in the global financial crisis. The fallout here could be twice that number as the world lurches now towards global recession. One minister described it to me today as the biggest economic challenge we've faced as a nation since the Great Depression. Mitch? Mark Riley in Canberra. Thank you. The coronavirus crisis has triggered an evacuation at Docklands, with the NAB building emptying out after staff after a staff member tested positive. Laurel Irving is there. Laurel, it came after Victoria confirmed another 23 cases. Yes, Mitch, and that was our biggest daily jump so far. And with this case at NAB, it goes to at least 24. NAB wrote to all of its employees at this office around 3 o'clock this afternoon, advising that a worker on the ground floor had tested positive to COVID-19. The building was immediately evacuated. We saw thousands of people streaming out, many with their arms full of laptops and files. They'll be asked to work from home for the next few days as the building is, as NAB calls it, pandemically cleansed. The hope is that they will be allowed back later in the week, but we are seeing these numbers rapidly rise of coronavirus cases in Victoria. You can only imagine that this will be a scene that will be repeated in many workplaces as the crisis deepens and in schools as well. Our first state school closed, Turak Primary empty after a teacher tested positive. But while a handful of private schools have called off classes, for the moment the rest will remain open. As the pandemic moves and as we reach that peak, uh, there will be school closures, but we are not there yet. Uh, it would do more harm than good if we had broad-based closure of schools today. Villa Maria Aged Care has locked down its 11 homes in Victoria, banning visitors for a fortnight. As of this morning, Victoria had 94 cases of the virus, a sharp rise over the past week, mirrored by the other states. Australia's total is 375. A new drive-through testing clinic is open at Melton with an extra 200,000 masks available for testers. And as positive results increase, a blunt warning from the Premier. We are going to get to a position in Victoria where all elective surgery will be cancelled. Tonight, the Premiers and Prime Minister will likely decide on even tougher measures to stop the spread of the virus. We're looking at receiving additional vi uh, advice in relation to uh, the elderly, aged care homes uh, and uh, uh, indoor mass gatherings over the course of the, uh, the next 24 hours. Victorians have been caught out overseas as well. Melbourne engineer Hasindu Saran Guhewaga and two mates are stranded in the Philippines after their flights home were cancelled. Not knowing, I think that's the biggest concern. Like I'm a traveller that tries to have everything planned and just not knowing can be quite anxious. He's urged anyone considering an overseas trip to cancel. Laurel Irving, 7 News. And Melbourne pensioners have been caught up in an early morning shopping debacle that was supposed to make their lives easier. It was set up to give them special access to supermarkets so they could beat the panic buying crush. But many went home disappointed. 
Before sunrise, they queued calmly with shopping lists and hope. Meat, veg, fruit, anything. Seniors and the disabled given special early access to Woolworths and IGA supermarkets. It's the one time I've appreciated being old. Staff you checked pensioner much. and concession cards and turned away some who were too young. I just wanted to go get some coke. Even those inside were disappointed. There's nothing on the shelves. I haven't got toilet paper, I haven't got pasta. I need everything, I've got nothing. Nothing. They're all sh Tempers flared over toilet paper at a Coles in Melbourne's north. Get out! Get out! Get out! It's just sheer greed and panicking. At another, a masked staff member sterilised doors with rows of stock low or gone across Melbourne. Pasta, laundry detergent, eggs, frozen veggies, meat, bread, milk, flour, instant noodles, pet food and still toilet paper. Although pallets of it are being shipped from the main Woolworths warehouse and some shops are selling it individually. Country supermarkets are barren too. Shopkeepers suspect Melburnians are driving into town to raid their stock. At Costco, hundreds queued for checkouts and Aldi increased its limits. It was just on toilet paper. Now also pasta, flour, rice, paper towels, tissues and hand sanitizer. Late today announcing its stores now won't open each morning until 9.30. Big companies like this, how can they do this to people? Woolworths conceded in a statement that this morning wasn't perfect, that they regret that many customers were unable to get the items they needed, adding, we're doing our best. You don't need to go and do four months worth of shopping from A to Z on your shopping list. That doesn't do anyone any good. Paul Dowsley, 7 News. Airlines have been dealt another huge blow as a new round of travel restrictions come into force. Qantas announced it's grounding 150 aircraft, slashing international flights by a whopping 90%. The flying kangaroo, all but grounded. Nothing to do for Qantas jets with airport terminals empty of passengers. There's no people here. Reducing flights by a quarter last week wasn't enough. Now Qantas plans to cut to the bone. International capacity cut 90%, domestic 60%, 150 planes grounded, affecting 30,000 jobs. They're going to lose a lot of money, they're going to lose a lot of staff. Cuts to Qantas and Jetstar. Starting in a fortnight, they'll be phased in, lasting until at least the end of May. If the planes are going to be empty, then they need to be on the ground where they're not burning fuel. Qantas workers told to take leave, paid or unpaid. These are Australian families that are potentially going to suffer greatly. Disrupted passengers are being offered vouchers to reschedule those not already reacting. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to get out today. Even though my flight was booked in the future on a different airline, I'm just trying to get out right now, cut my losses and then get home. With much of its fleet now parked and idle, Qantas says it may take months for air travel to rebound, leaving a huge challenge for the aviation industry, saving jobs. Unions have written to the Prime Minister seeking urgent government help. The government needs to step up and say that it will support aviation companies until the virus passes. Not just Qantas, regional carrier Rex called a trading halt on its shares today. First half profit already down 30%, now pleading for federal help. Chris Ma, 7 News. Finance editor Gemma Acton is at the stock exchange. Gemma, Qantas shares were down, but overall the market was up today. That's right, Peter. Investors didn't know quite what to make of Qantas's drastic announcement. Initially, its shares moved higher, but then closed more than 5% down. Elsewhere, though, the action was more promising. Nearly $100 billion was added back to the market's value in its best day in 23 years, closing up 5.83%. Now, this came as investors pinned more hopes on government support arriving soon. And finally, some comfort for bank shareholders. The majors all finished sharply higher, with Commonwealth leading the way, up 13%. Peter. Gemma Acton at the Stock Exchange, thank you. There are glimmers of hope in the race to find a vaccine to stop this outbreak. The first human trials are now up and running in the United States as Melbourne researchers lead the world in understanding how our immune system can fight COVID-19. In the grips of a pandemic, some positive news from Melbourne researchers. I think we know much more than we knew 
18 months ago. Scientists from the Doherty Institute began working around the clock as soon as Wuhan hit the headlines. I think we were significantly worried that this one might be the real deal from, from fairly early on. Their research showing healthy people can expect to fight off mild and moderate cases of coronavirus in just three days. It is exciting because our body is actually doing what we are hoping that a body would do in these kind of situations, basically fight back. The team studied the way five of Melbourne's first coronavirus patients responded to COVID-19, identifying the antibodies within the immune system that drive recovery. Understanding how they work could lead to a vaccine. This is what we're here for. The research could also help doctors determine which patients are likely to be hit hard by the virus and which ones are able to fight it off on their own, easing the burden on our already struggling health system. This is a really unique situation that I don't think that anyone in the community or acute health care have faced before. In the US, the first jab to find a COVID-19 vaccine. I hope it works. I hope there is no crazy side effects. But even if the test is successful, a widely available vaccine could still be 18 months away. Estelle Greypink, 7 News. And there's some relief for Hollywood star Tom Hanks and his wife Rita Wilson, who are now out of hospital on the Gold Coast. Hanks' son has announced they're now in self-quarantine. They're out of the hospital. They're still self-quarantined, obviously, but they're feeling a lot better. So that's a relief. The pair tested positive to COVID-19 last week. Now, time for a much-needed good news story now. And in the face of all the gloom and panic, the coronavirus emergency is bringing out the best in some of us. Children, neighbours and even celebrities are going above and beyond with random acts of kindness to help strangers in need. For Marika and Kira Mitchell, a supply surplus transformed into toilet paper togetherness with elderly neighbours. We thought we'll just go around and check on them and toilet paper was a good way to just knock on the door and say, are you OK? They walked around their local retirement village, initially suspicion. She said, would you like some toilet paper? And I thought, hello, is this a scam or what? But... It was a random act of kindness. Thank you very much. You've actually made my day. This is something really special. He said that we made his day, but he made our day, and, you know, it was just wonderful. In Paran, Karen, too, is offering toilet paper to strangers. We got through the fires and floods. The Australian people were magnificent, and we can do this too. Psychologist Christine Grove is letterboxing neighbours offering support. Just to give them a note of, of kindness and to spread maybe some positive messages. Audience of one tonight. <laughs> Keith so Urban cancelled his concert yeah. but performed on Instagram for his fans anyway, wife Nicole Kidman in support. It's hoped such generosity is more contagious than the dreaded virus itself. And Marika Mitchell says she's learned an important lesson from her toilet paper mission. Be a role model for your local community. Help others and you'll get a bit of a boost yourself. It made us feel really good that we made a difference to your day. Nick McCallum, 7 News. Role model indeed. Seven News will have a special edition of The Latest tonight at nine o'clock with Michael Usher covering the coronavirus pandemic in depth. Tim Watson joins us now with a look ahead to sport. And, Tim, it's a fast-moving story in the AFL right now. Mitch, it's hard to keep up. We'll cross back live and reveal exclusive information about the devastating financial impact on clubs. Plus, we'll tell you which Premiership Tiger won't play round one after injuring himself at training... Could there be a fight on the AFL's hands to play the grand final at the MCG? And here exclusively from McFanning after the World Surf League shut down the Bells Beach Pro Beach. Plenty more coming up in sport a little bit later. Thanks, Tim. We'll see you then. Next, a blackmailer's heartless grab for cash. She targeted the parents of a dying baby. Their message to the cruel con woman is next. Also, what's the excuse for Melbourne's crazy petrol prices as oil tanks? A supermarket emergency after a violent confrontation on the Mornington Peninsula. 
and a mid-air scare for a Jetstar flight, why it was forced to land in Mildura. These are television's... Oh, my God. So beautiful. ...biggest transformations. Can see you in our house? Bigger reveals, bigger emotion. <gasps> you OK? I'm yeah, so okay. overwhelmed. Cool. This is the reason that we went on this show. Yeah. Give the kids something awesome. So thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Television's most inspiring home reveals. High stakes. This April on 7. One more thing about your application. We think you make much more than what you put in those eight boxes. At Bank First, we're owned by our customers. And that's why we value what you really make. Get some real snack faction Subway now has snacks. Choose from our delicious snacks range from $2. It's more than a snack, it's snack faction if you've been injured at work, it's important to know where you stand. Talk to Australia's number one injuries law firm. Morris Blackburn Lawyers will maximise your compensation so you can get on with your life again. Call us now. It costs nothing to know where you stand. Introducing Switch from Ladbrokes. Switch gives you the power to pick your promotion, giving you more of what you want to bet on racing. Place a fixed win bet and choose whether to double your winnings or get bonus back for second and third. The power to switch things up is in your hands. Make the switch at Ladbrokes today. Ladbrokes, back yourself. Our health insurance is going up on April 1st. Enter the Belugist. Whoa! Is that your bill? No, this one's smaller. Compare, select and save with iSelect on 13, 19, 20. Ready for any challenge. Battery power. Made by Still. Only from your local Still dealer. On a brekkie run? How did you know? Get your Woolies worth on great specials this week, like Kellogg's Nutri-Grain 805 grams, just $4.25 each. That's half price. That's why I pick Woolies. Get some real snack faction. Subway now has snacks. Choose from our delicious snacks range from $2. It's more than a snack, it's snack faction. A heartless blackmailer is behind bars tonight after scamming the parents of a dying baby girl. The woman pretended to have found their stolen phone that was full of precious photos and demanded money to return it. While they tried to focus on their dying baby, Siti Kamal was focused on money. I'm glad that she got what she deserved, but in saying that, I don't actually want anyone thinking about her. I want them thinking about Amaya. Amaya was more important than her. Dee Windross was caring for her little girl when she dashed to Chadston Shopping Centre and accidentally left her phone in a bathroom. You deserve everything that you're going to suffer for what you did. You saw me running back, you heard how desperate I was and you still walked away from me with that phone. The Windross parents posted on social media to try to get it back. That's when Kamal, a mother herself, texted them pretending to have it and demanded $1,000. She continued to harass them for money as baby Amaya died. That you should be inspired in the first place by such suffering to offend in this way, much less continue it as intensely as you did, even after being told Amaya was dying and then of her death, I find to be so reprehensible as to be amoral. The 25-year-old was jailed for three years. She can apply for parole in two. Although the court process is over for the Windross family, one problem remains. Someone still has their phone. Give it back. Stop being so pathetic. Chanel Vella, 7 News. A Woolworths employee has been stabbed outside a Rosebud supermarket. Police pulled a large kitchen knife from a rubbish bin in the car park. A 25-year-old man was arrested at a nearby house.
There is no suggestion or information to say that it's related to any panic buy buying or linked to the coronavirus situation at this stage. Police say it was an unprovoked attack and the men are not known to each other. Petrol prices are taking Melbourne motorists on a wild ride with some outlets hitting $1.60 a litre. A survey of pumps shows you can save more than 40 cents a litre if you shop around. Melbourne's petrol is once again spiking. $1.59 for unleaded at not one but dozens of bowsers across the city. They've been doing it forever, so why should it change now? I've got to have it, so whatever it is, I'll be happy when it goes down. The RACV says that's the complacency petrol retailers are relying on. They're jacking up the price simply because they can and hoping competitors will do the same. It's fairly cheeky, I mean, that's the Melbourne fuel price cycle for you. Today, the price peaked at $1.59 in South Yarra, Ashwood and Templestowe. This is not really justified because the wholesale prices are continuing to decline. It was $1.16 in Moorabbin, but just $1.11 at McKinnon. The wholesale petrol price has fallen by nine cents in less than a month, but the prices at some pumps are climbing. The usually stable diesel market has also been hit. The wholesale diesel price has dropped by 20%, but according to experts, only a fraction of that price drop has been passed on to motorists. We advise anybody looking for cheap fuel to um, look for a fuel um, logging app, such as the RACV app, which, um, which will tell you what the fuel market's doing at any given time. So it's up to motorists to drive their own savings. Jody Lee, 7 News. A Jetstar plane has been forced to divert to Mildura over fears of a fire in the cargo hold. The aircraft was on its way from Sydney to Uluru at lunchtime. Paramedics checked several people but no one was injured. Fire crews have assessed the plane and found no signs of damage. Jane Bunn joins us now for an early look at the weather. And Jane, it was another warm day. Mitch, we are now in a stretch of warmer than average weather and it should last for most of the week. Today reached a top of 28 in the city. That is four degrees above the March average. Have a look outside now and it's still warm. It's up on 27 in the city. Our run of cooler nights is over. Tonight shouldn't drop below 20 degrees. That is thanks to northerly winds gusting around 50 k's an hour. Those winds make it hotter over in western suburbs. It reached 29 in Werribee, 30 in Geelong and 32 in Torquay. We had bright sunshine all through the morning, but cloud arrived this afternoon. Wispy high cloud in there and a bit of cumulus underneath. These don't produce any wet weather. There is lots of sunshine. And after a warm night, it's warm again tomorrow. I'll show you when it'll end after sport, Mitch. OK, thanks, Jane. We'll see you then. Next, the historic decision that will hit 16,000 grassroots footy teams. The verdict on the 2020 season for every club and junior footballer. Details are coming up live. Also, extreme measures as America and Europe lock down. France declares war as Britain retreats on a drastic plan. Another local council in the firing line. And later, a health expert's answers to your coronavirus questions. That's coming up live. Footy is back. Bigger than ever. The Tigers kick it all off against a blue squad betting on an upset. Look at Eddie Mitch! Then... Dogs and magpies go head-to-head -head in a Friday night blockbuster. Listen to that roar. And the Giants face the Cats on Saturday night. Really nice finish. The biggest opening round ever starts with Thursday Night Footy, live and free on 7. Sam O'Keefe in the soft slide. This is it. Come on, Slippery. On the runway. Slides. It's big. It's a new world record. Somebody stop. She'll slide out the stadium. That make it look easy moment was brought to you by Sportsbet's new AFL Player Hub. Now it's easier to add your favourite player markets to your same game multi. Tigers to win, hit a dusty to have 30 touches and kick two goals. Bigger odds. AFL Player Hub, new from Sportsbet. Mmm, diamonds. Life's timelessly elegant way of saying... <laughs> You gotta treat yourself, girl.
At Beacon, we help you live lighter with innovative products that are good for the environment and your wallet. Shop Australia's largest range of energy-saving lights, fans and globes and get 40% off your second item store-wide. To help stop the spread of viruses, like the flu or coronavirus, good hygiene is essential. That starts with washing your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Whenever you cough, sneeze or blow your nose, prepare food or eat, care for someone sick, touch your face or use the toilet. Remember to cough or sneeze into your arm or a tissue. Bin the tissue and wash your hands. Together we can help stop the spread and stay healthy. Visit health.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Land Rover sales season brings with it an unprecedented $20,000 worth of extras on the special edition Land Rover Discovery. Seasons change, some change better than others. Our health insurance is going up on April 1st. Enter the Belusionist! Whoa! Is that your bill? No, this one's smaller. Compare, select and save with iSelect on 13, 19, 20. These cops weren't expecting this. Put me in the car. I want to go to prison. Well, you're under arrest now. Duh. New Highway Patrol, Wednesday on 7. Duh. The impact of coronavirus has had a massive hit on grassroots sports. All competitions have been suspended. Tom Chadwick has the details and Tom, community footy is off until the end of May at least. Well, Mitch, this could be a disaster for local and regional sporting clubs that are already struggling to stay afloat financially. Now, the AFL has made a national call that all community football to be postponed until June to try to stop the spread of coronavirus. Now, in Victoria alone, there's almost 500,000 participants playing football. This includes schools, Auskick and AFL Nines, not to mention country and amateur leagues. While Netball Victoria and the FFA have sent clubs directives to suspend all netball and soccer competitions for four weeks. That is until the end of the Term 1 school holidays. Also today, Mitch, uh, Cricket Victoria recommended the rest of its season be cancelled for all community competitions. Mitch, so this is huge news. Unbelievable. Tom Chadwick at Armadale. Thank you. Millions of Americans are in lockdown tonight as the US takes extreme measures to stop the spread of the virus. Bars and restaurants have been ordered to close, with Donald Trump warning his country to brace for a recession. San Francisco ordered into lockdown. To contain COVID-19, 7 million people told to go home and stay home for three weeks. These measures will be disruptive to day-to-day -day life, but there is no need to panic. As Donald Trump suggested for 15 days, all Americans should try to work from home, keep kids out of school, avoid non-essential travel and groups of more than 10 people. Each and every one of us has a critical role to play in stopping the spread and transmission of the virus. It was last orders at bars and restaurants in major cities told to shut, limited to takeaways. Workers left worried. It's very apocalyptic. Sign up for unemployment, we're all done here. City symbols deserted, like LA's Santa Monica Pier, the Statue of Liberty now closed. No matter where you look, this is something, it's an invisible enemy. Admitting the worst could last till August and a recession may follow. Economic implications sinking in as Wall Street sank. The Dow finished down nearly 3,000 points or 13%. I've seen the crash of 87, I've seen 9-11. This feels so, so different. The Dow Jones is now back where it was when Donald Trump became president three years ago. And market watchers say even once the worst of the virus outbreak is over, it could take years to recover. In New York, Paul Kanak, 7 News. France has declared war on coronavirus and told residents they no longer have to pay taxes and bills to help them get through the crisis. It took the drastic action as Boris Johnson backflipped on his radical plan to control the spread through the UK. 
In the northern Italian town of Bergamo, cemeteries are struggling to cope. Funerals are banned for fear of contagion, but burials happen every half an hour. Heartbreaking scenes likely to be replicated across the continent. Nous sommes en guerre. The French president declaring we're in a health war, locking his country down for at least 15 days. Residents are exempt from paying taxes and bills. In the UK, where the original plan was to build up herd immunity, the approach has drastically changed. We need people to start working from home where they possibly can. And you should avoid pubs, clubs, theatres and other such social venues. Switzerland, the home of headquarters, is shutting down too. Here, the World Health Organization, World Trade and the International Olympic Committee sites are empty 18 weeks out from the Games. In the next few hours, Games organisers will meet via teleconference to discuss the latest developments and their impact on Tokyo. A new public opinion poll published in Japan shows the majority of residents want the Games postponed. In a world where everything looks different, how could they possibly go ahead? In Geneva, Sarah Greenolch, 7 News. The Andrews government has given the green light to conventional onshore gas drilling, saying gas prices could eventually drop. They lifted a ban on onshore exploration after a three-year study by the state's chief scientist. There are some things that need to be improved. There are some further steps we need to take. Uh, but that we can safely uh, explore and extract natural gas against those highest of standards. The Greens condemn the move as economic vandalism. A second Victorian council is facing the sack this year. The state government is moving to dismiss Whittlesea Council in Melbourne's north. A report has found there's a lack of senior leadership, including five CEOs in five years. And the council spent more than half a million dollars of ratepayers' funds on legal disputes. An intractable, toxic culture has developed of infighting and division and internal bickering, uh, which has led to the total collapse of governance. Administrators are being appointed and council elections will not be held again until 2024. Next, your coronavirus questions answered. A health professor tells us what you need to know about catching the virus. Also, a British star opens up about having the virus. And two penguins enjoy a night at the aquarium. Why? They were roaming free. I'm giving you a 10. That's it. A 10. <laughs> the super dinner party you can't miss. When you cook with love and laughter, that's when you create food that just hits you right in the heart. Can they win my kitchen rules? We are so close. Tonight, 7.30 on 7. Raise your game for round one of the AFL with Richmond versus Carlton this Thursday night. Apply your allocated double your winnings in your bet slip and if your bet wins, we'll double your winnings in cash. Bet Easy, the official wagering partner of the AFL. I'll say for those things. Shame. Nothing spoils that Toyota value feeling. Get Hilux 4x4 SR5 Auto. Drive away from 54990. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. Out there in the universe, stars are born every day. Closer to home in Compton, Western Victoria, a star is born every second. For over 93 years, our people have put their passion and dedication into creating something bright and brilliant. Not just butter, but a star. Western star. More than butter. Marvel Universe Live, an action-packed live arena show. See your favorite Marvel superheroes. It's the ultimate family experience. Assemble at Rod Lever Arena for a limited season from April 2nd to 6th. Book now at Ticket Tech. There's a new way to curl hair that uses air, not extreme heat, to attract, wrap, and set curls. Powered by the Dyson Digital Motor, with different heads for different styles. Dyson Air Wrap. It's a race against time. Comparing all your flight choices, Sam's visiting each airline site separately and knows how fast special deals can sell out. 
Cindy's gone straight to Webjet, where she can instantly see all her options, book the best value airfare, get her booking price guaranteed, and still earn frequent flyer points. It's time to make your own way in the world with Webjet. Beat sensitivity pain fast with Sensodyne Rapid Relief, clinically proven relief for just 60 seconds. Our health insurance is going up on April 1st. Enter the Belusionist! Whoa! Is that your bill? No, this one's smaller. Compare, select and save with iSelect on 13, 19, 20. There are so many new developments every day with the coronavirus and for many of us it's information overload which can be confusing. The Dean of Health at Swinburne University, Professor Bruce Thompson, is here to give us some clarity. Professor, first of all, how can you catch the coronavirus? Well, the coronavirus, you catch it very similar to any other virus. So it's with other people who sneeze or cough or um, you pick it up like any normal other virus like influenza. Now, there were 23 new cases overnight. Are these numbers expected to calm down or accelerate? Um, well, sadly, they will increase just for a little bit longer. Um, but this is the very reason why the government and the various health departments have actually put all the measures in place that we're experiencing now. We have to curb the actual rise. How long can the virus exist outside the human body? Well, it can exist uh, for an hour in sort of airborne type particles, but it can sit, looks like it can, on an actual hard surface, can sit there for about three hours. So that's the very reason why hand washing and cleaning all our surfaces and just general hygiene is critically important at this particular time. Do you believe our schools should still be open when other countries have ordered them to close? Well, this is a really good question. Um, any further uh, opportunity for this virus to spread is not a good thing. So anything we can do to stop this spread, even though the children are actually seem to be less vulnerable to the virus, but even so, we just have to stop it spreading. So it is probably a good idea. And if I'm quarantined at home, how do other people in my household protect themselves? Well, it's very similar to if a family member has got a really horrible cold. I mean, everyone wants to leave them alone and so the universal precautions of lots of hand washing, lots of cleaning your surfaces and, and just general isolation from each other is extremely effective. Canada has announced it's closing its borders. Should we be doing the same? Well, again, this is another really good question. If we can actually curb the rise and actually get what we call this plateau, then obviously we don't want to actually have more virus coming in from outside. So it potentially, I think, is not actually a really quite a good idea to do this for a short period of time, yes. And do you believe all elderly and people whose immune systems are compromised should self-isolate? Well, these are the very vulnerable um, uh, community group and I've actually noticed that a number of nursing um, homes and aged care facilities are actually uh, closed for visitors and that actually makes a lot of sense because they are the most vulnerable people of our community and they need to be protected. Professor Bruce Thompson, thanks for your time this evening. It's an absolute, absolute pleasure. Thank you. British actor Idris Elba has joined the list of well-known actors with COVID-19. The star of The Wire didn't have any symptoms but got tested after coming into contact with an infected person. Yeah, and it sucks. Um, listen, I'm doing OK. Bond girl Olga Kurilenko and Game of Thrones' Christopher Hearview also have the virus. And if you need some cheering up, this video's sure to do just that. An aquarium in Chicago is closed to humans, but these penguins have been happily exploring the building and getting to know their fellow marine life. One in particular taking a liking to his neighbours, the fish. It's the aquarium's way to keep the penguins active while the building's closed to visitors due to the coronavirus outbreak. Some good news here, yes, Steve. We need that. Returning to sport with Tim Watson, Tim, a star tiger has been sent home from training today. That's right, Mitch. He's had his fair share of setbacks too. We'll cross live for the details. And that's not the only cause for concern at Tigerland, with a premiership hero injured at training. Plus, money talks as AFL clubs and players respond to calls for a pay cut. 
We'll tell you how the racing industry is protecting their own and exclusive here from Mick Fanning as the World Surf League makes the call on Rip Curl Pro at Bells Beach. Australian survivor have selected Lydia. Lutz. Yes! We are on here. Right Let's do it. Put the call through. Are you sure we don't want to try for Carl Sevenovic? Positive. One. It's done. We've got him. We've got him. With pick five, Channel 7's The Front Bar have selected Andy Lee. <laughs> 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 The Front Bar, Wednesday 8.30 on 7. Bring home style with a new look from Harvey Norman. New to our range, Jordan, with every comfort built in. From powered headrests to a console with LED lights, the three-seater leather-powered recliner sofa is 2299. For contemporary leather comfort, the Taylor Mark II. Offering powered headrests and powered reclining actions, the three-seater is 3499. Update your space with the modern Lennox dining range, featuring a concrete dining table and eight fabric dining chairs, only 2999. See more in store now at Harvey Norman. If you've been injured, talk directly to a lawyer, not a call centre. If you don't win, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no fee. Call Arnold Thomas and Becker. Specialising in injury compensation for over 50 years. Spirited traveler craves the unique and unexplored. Curious? Then come aboard Spirit of Tasmania. Be a spirited traveler. Make your mark this AFL season with a Ladbrokes early payout. Place a bet on the head-to-head -head early payout market, and if your team leads by 10 points at quarter time, you win. Ladbrokes, back yourself. Lint Root Sensation. The finest lint chocolate with a deliciously soft, fruity centre. And now discover new Lint Crispy Sensation. With Allianz Comprehensive Car Insurance, we guarantee all the repairs we authorise. Hey, good to go. Looks great. Uh... 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 Thanks. Get that? Uh... Leon's feeling. Call or search for a quote today. This sports report brought to you by Allianz. Welcome back. Richmond has been forced to send Jack Higgins home as it prepares for Thursday night's season opener against Carlton. Live to Chief Football Reporter Mark Stevens and Steve-O. The Tigers are being very cautious. Absolutely, Tim. Uh, Higgins, a very popular forward, sent home by medical staff. He had cold-like symptoms at Punt Road today. The Tigers have strict protocols, so Higgins at home right now. I'm told he won't be tested for coronavirus, but this is the new era we're in at the moment, and it's bad timing for Higgins personally. He was in the mix for what would have been a great return against the Blues. Certainly he was a chance now, probably set to miss round one if the season goes ahead at all. Now, there's some relief at Collingwood for sure. The skipper... Scott Pendlebury cleared after a coronavirus test. He'll train tomorrow. Testing more common than you may think as well. A source today said Pendlebury, one of five tests in footy, all precautionary at the moment. Now, the players, of course, here at the AFLPA, they want a 22-game season, not 17, as pushed by the AFL. A lot of talk about pay packets. I asked the AFLPA chief, Paul Marsh, if a 20% pay cut was a sticking point. The pay cut piece, when I say it hasn't been discussed, we haven't got down to those sort of discussions with the AFL. That's a very long and complicated piece of work that we'll have to do. But right now, that's not our number one priority. Crazy time in footy. Fingers crossed we get there for round one, Tim. Thanks, Steve-O. There are significant financial implications now hovering over the AFL's decision life to Tom Brown. Tom, what can you tell us? 
17 rounds because they don't want a 20% pay cut. About half the game's revenue comes from TV. So if you reduce the games, you reduce the revenue. These are the AFL's actual accounts, and not just the players are set to take a hit. There's big expenses. Clubs and player wages, $314 million. Community footy costs $58 million. Running the Players Association, running it, costs $37 million. AFLW, about $16 million. Operating expenses and other costs, $365 million. So if you leave all those as is and cut the revenue by 20%, the AFL would have reserves for about a year. That's excluding the clubs losing money from the crowds not coming. So it's a perilous position. The AFL clubs, the AFL wants clubs to cut costs. The clubs want the AFL to trim the fat, and the best minds in the game will combat the problem. Business leaders, everything's on the table to play at least 17 rounds by the end of the year. Everything's on the table. For example, three games a day, games on weeknights, virtual signage on the broadcast, even possibly a final ten to take advantage of the free gap, possibly at the end of the season. People go, oh, you can't have more than you know, half the team's qualifying for the finals. We can. You can do anything. And yeah. it, it could be an opportunity in this this dysfunctional season. Tim, it's a good thing the AFL's been very careful with its money. The clubs need their members' support. Thanks, Tom. Richmond will be without dual premiership defender Basha Hooley for Thursday night's clash against Carlton. Hooley suffered a calf injury at Punt Road this morning. For now, every session is a closed one in the footy world, but the build-up to round one rolls on. <laughs> Richmond's healthy list was the envy of the competition, but just two days out from the season opener, Bashar Hawley limped from the track. A calf injury likely to sideline him for at least three to four weeks. John Warsfold's weekly press conference was held via video conference. G'day, guys. He's seen plenty in over 30 years of footy. I played in a grand final... It wasn't played at the MCG through pilot strikes where um, we had to catch small planes that landed a couple of times going across the country. You know, this is at another level. Tom Bellchambers, Jake Stringer and Connor McKenna are all available to take on Fremantle. We're gearing up to play, and but we also understand that uh, things possibly could change. The Saints also trying to go about business as usual. There's certainly a level of anxiety um, amongst the playing group, as there would be with the, the general public. Andrew McCormack, 7 News. And the AFL could be forced to play the grand final at Marvel Stadium if the season is delayed. Cricket Australia takes over the MCG in October with the men's T20 World Cup locked in at venues across the country. There's a World Cup planned for October, November. We've got agreements in place with the Victorian State Government, the MCC uh, for the venue and, and our assumption is that they go ahead as planned. New South Wales has been declared Sheffield Shield champions after the season was called off. And the NBL will announce who will be awarded the championship title in the next 48 hours after the grand final series was cancelled due to the coronavirus outbreak. The Kings advised the league they didn't want to continue the series under the circumstances. It makes me very proud that the decision was made to reflect the fact that our competitive desires are well and truly secondary. The Wildcats led the series 2-1. For the first time in 59 years, there'll be no surfing contest at Bells Beach this Easter. And although he's retired, Mick Fanning hit the waves on the Gold Coast, backing the World Surf League's decision to suspend the tour until May. Unfortunately, it's called off, but, you know, you've got to keep people safe and keep people healthy and... Um, you know, but we're still surfing, so uh, we're, we're all so happy. The Margaret River Pro has also been cancelled, and Mitch, that ends another crazy day in sport in the world, to be quite frank. You might not have any sport to report on soon. <laughs> you might be right. Thank you very much, Tim. Jane is next with the forecast, and Jane, it's another warm night ahead. Well, we've always got weather to report on, Mitch. We are staying warm. That's day and night until the end of the week. The details are next. Hello, I'm Michael Usher. Tonight on the latest from 7 News across Victoria at 9pm, everything you need to know about COVID-19. Cases rise across the state, hundreds more predicted within days. Fresh reaction, businesses struggling, and the push to electronically track those in self-isolation. Stay informed with the latest tonight at 9pm. He stole his brother's wife. I wanted to tell Ben that we slept together. Now he's back for one more thing. It's all becoming clear now. Why are you here? Money. 
if he finds out about us... Then we better make sure he doesn't. Why do you feel like you have to blackmail me? That's not how this is going to go. Home and Away, weeknights at 7 on 7. Get ready for the return of the killers. At Amy Park, November 21. The Killers, on sale Monday, March 23. Here's to the quitters. He's a quitter. So is she. And her. That's right. They, along with thousands of other Australians, have quit smoking thanks to the help of Nicorette Quick Mist. It starts to relieve cravings from 30 seconds, making you two and a half times more likely to quit. Let's do something amazing. Get Nicorette Quick Mist for a great price at Chemist Warehouse. Colac, Victoria, the home of ice cream. It's where we take fresh local milk and cream, free-range eggs and 90 years of know-how to craft our creamiest, premiumest ice cream. Buller, Murray Street. Meet the Roots family, a family with a serious root problem. Roots? And a magic solution. Let me show you something. Magic retouch by L'Oreal Paris. Three seconds to flawless roots. Three, two, one. Done. Magic retouch by L'Oreal. Because you're worth it. If you've been injured at work, it's important to know where you stand. Talk to Australia's number one injuries law firm. Morris Blackburn Lawyers will maximise your compensation so you can get on with your life again. Call us now. It costs nothing to know where you stand. Get Vodafone NVN with 4G backup. Plans start from just $65 a month. Add more services to your account to save even more. The future is exciting. Ready? Performance you've never seen before. Safety you've never seen before. This is the SUV you've never seen before. The all-new MG HS. When it comes to dealing with mental health, there's care. You missed another meeting, mate. Everything all right? And there's the uncommon care you get with HCF. Hi, Daniel. Connecting eligible members to a range of online mental health Daniel. services, such as video chat with a professional. Great session. As Australia's largest not-for-profit health fund, we put people before profit. That's uncommon care. Coronavirus money advice. From super to selling a house. The vital tips to keep your money safe. On Sunrise, tomorrow. This weather report brought to you by HCF, Australia's most trusted health fund. Hello again. We're having another warm day, but there's a bit of cloud out there and the wind did pick up. The city began the day on 13 before it reached a top of 28.2. We're in a stretch of above average days and nights are about to warm up as well. There is lots of sunshine, but we do have a field of cumulus cloud and some wispy high cloud over the top. None of that is producing any rain. The air is too dry. The warm air is thanks to a high that is out to our east. That's set to remain there for the rest of of the week. A cold front is just sliding southwards. We're only getting the cloud from that. Our next wet weather comes from the low that is slowly crossing the bite. So we stay warm tomorrow and on Thursday too in northwesterly winds. This means it'll be warm overnight as well. The city barely drops to 20 for the next two nights. Rain brushes southwestern and central Victoria on Thursday and Friday. And showers may continue on the weekend as well. But I wouldn't expect much from this one. This map shows the maximum totals. Much of the south will see less than five millimetres and the north has nothing at all. After a mild Friday, there is a new surge of cold air over the weekend. We felt the coast, but cloud stretches over much of the south and just into the north of the state as well. It's not thick clouds, still lots of sun shining through. The winds are north, start with 20.